Okay, hello everybody. This is the wheel. Um, like I said yesterday, the point of the assignment that we're going to do on the wheel this semester for Ceramics 1 is not that you come up with a finished product. Okay, um, The wheel is one of those things where you kind of have to put some repetition in and just get some experience with it, even if that's not very successful experience. And over time, right, it's like riding a bike, um, over time your body just kind of gets used to it. Um, it is a very physical process, so it's kind of the kind of you know thing where you just have to practice um, and let it develop over time. No luck? No, I went there. Okay, I'll talk about the sheets and then I'll show it to you later. Um, so what you guys are going to do, you're going to get a sheet um, and it says uh, cylinder one, two, three, four, and five, and then it says bowl one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and on there um, it tells you all of the different things, all of the different criteria, just like you would have for a normal rubric um, that you guys are going to look for in a cylinder and in a bowl. Okay, um, so what you need in order to kind of start your wheel practice is obviously smocks, okay, if you so choose. If you don't wear a smock, that's fine. It's not going to be a safety hazard or anything, but, you know, you get to walk around with clay in your clothes for the rest of the day. Um, you will need a container of water, okay. There are large containers like this in the kiln room in there, and I would highly advise you to use cold water. Okay. If you remember from when we do the big steaming bucket, when we break down the reclaim, we use hot water for that. Well, if hot water breaks down our clay, we don't want our clay breaking down as we're working with it, as we're trying to make shapes out of it that need to kind of, you know, hold up on their own. So you want to use cold water. You're going to need a sponge. You can just get that from your bin. Um, the wire cutoff tool I have right here for sake of the demo. Normally this will be under the sink. Um, and to the right, that larger cabinet to the right of the sink, there's uh, wheel tools in there. Um, you can borrow a needle tool from me, you just give me your ID. And then a wooden modeling tool you'll get from your bin from your table. Okay. Um, sometimes you can use other tools, some people will use like rib tools, those are those like rubber smoothers that are in your uh, table bins as well. Um, Sometimes it also helps to have some paper towels nearby or to have like a rag or a towel nearby. I'll probably ask you for some paper towels at some point so somebody just be ready for that. Um, and then you'll notice that we have uh, a couple of balls of clay that are kind of balled up and ready to go. Okay. Um, this is kind of crucial to making your life much happier because if you only do one, then every time you need a new ball of clay, you have to stop, get up, clean your hands, go prepare your clay, blah, blah, blah. It takes a lot of time. Whereas if you have several ready to go, you can just kind of go, 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 and it just makes your life much more efficient as far as that um, section on the wheel. Does that make sense? Okay. So the reason that I'm going to ask you to throw, and of course by throw I mean that's what it's called when you create something on the wheel. It's called throwing on the pottery wheel. Um, um, you would certainly never actually actively create projectile motion with your clay. <laughs> um, I'm asking you to throw five cylinders and five bowl shapes because those are kind of the two main shapes that you're going to use to create anything later on on the wheel. Okay, so I'm going to have you, it's kind of like learning to walk, baby steps, right? Um, I'm going to have you kind of, not master, but get comfortable with those two shapes to start with. Okay, uh, when we are turning on the wheel, there's two switches on this side. Okay, obviously I hope that you realize that it needs to be plugged in. Um, there's a foot pedal on the right side here that'll go under your right foot. And then there's two switches here. Sometimes people don't see the back switch because it's black and it's tucked kind of under this table. Okay, so the front switch you're going to turn on. There we go. Um, so that there's an orange light. Don't forget to turn this off when you're done. Okay, and then the switch behind it um, determines the direction that the wheel is going to go. Okay, these wheels do go in both directions. How do you know what direction you need? Well, I'm glad you asked. When the wheel is spinning, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed or which uh, hand you feel more comfortable with, you want that clay to come in through your palm and out your fingertips. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make sure my wheel is going in some direction. Okay, 
Um, the pedal works to control your speed, so the farther you push the pedal, the faster the wheel is going to go. It is variable, okay? So you can push it a little and it'll go very slowly, or you can push it a lot, it'll go a lot faster. You really don't ever need the wheel to go that fast, though, okay? Slow is kind of the way to go. Um, you want to watch. Um, you guys will be working directly on the wheel head, so you can see that there are concentric circles there for you to use as a guide, okay? So you're gonna watch for those and you wanna throw your clay down um, as close to the center of that wheel as possible. Does that make sense? So for me, I'm looking right here, so I want, that wasn't the greatest throw in the world. I want it to go right there, okay? Um, once you get it down there, okay, that downward force is going to help kind of adhere that clay to the wheel. As long as your wheel is dry, it should stick fine. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Once you have it down, then we want to start adding some water. This is where the smocks come in. And then I'm just going to um, kind of break the rule of what I just told you. Um, I said that you want to have it coming in towards your palm and out towards your fingertips, yes? The reason for that is because if your finger, let's say it's coming this way, if your finger were to get caught, okay, it can kind of grab your finger and then take it around the wheel. Um, I always tell the story of when I was in high school, when I was a uh, high school art student, um, a girl in my class got her fingernail caught in the clay and it basically just like ripped her finger around the, um, the wheel. Her wheel was going pretty fast um, and she ended up breaking her finger. So it is possible, right, anytime you're working with some sort of like rotary mechanical object, right, you have some sort of risk. Just like we wear safety glasses when we work with drills and buffers and stuff like that. Um, we want to tie your hair back and we want to just understand the risks so that we can avoid them. Okay. Um, first thing we need to do is center the clay. Now, I'm going to use this hand for that because this is my stronger hand, okay? So in order to avoid that risk, I'm going to keep my fingertips way out, and I'm going to use the palm of my hand. My elbow is down against my leg, against my hips, and I'm kind of using um, my knees on the wheel to kind of steady myself, okay? That's really, really important. So I'm going to put force on this clay using, well, that's not what's supposed to happen, using this part of the palm of my hand. See, I'm leaning over into it. Now my whole clay just kind of slid here. Stick clay. Now you'll know what happens if that happens. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so I used both hands. I'm squeezing in this way. Um, if you stay back here and try to do this, are you going to have a lot of force and strength? No, right? So you want to make sure that you're over it. I'm using that points of contact so that I'm really steady. You're going to hear me say many, many times, you control the clay. Do not let the clay push you around. Okay? And that's important for centering. Centering is the first thing that you have to do. So I'm putting force with both hands, okay? But especially from here so that it pushes that clay into the center. Does that make sense so far? Okay, now I've got all this irregularity up here. Now I'm gonna come back and push it down. Okay, see how I'm putting my two hands together when I'm touching the clay? That's for stability, okay? If I were to just push it like this, my hand's gonna go all over the place and it's gonna be wobbly. And wobbly clay isn't gonna get you very far beyond just frustrated and dirty. Um, you notice I keep re-wetting my clay. Anytime that your clay starts getting sticky feeling, that means it's too dry. Sticky feeling means friction. Friction means you're either gonna work harder than you have to or it's gonna pull your clay out of center, which can cause some undesired results. So this is starting to get nice and centered. I'm gonna carve in a little bit deeper at the base 
And did you notice what happened as soon as I made that base narrower? The whole lump got what? <coughs> Taller. Taller. Okay? So the wheel works like this. The wheel head is flat, right? Okay. Um, force kind of works like this. If you push down, the clay has nowhere to go but out. Okay? When you push in, the clay has nowhere to go but up. So think of it kind of like an upside down T. Okay? Um, and that's why when you make your cylinders and your bowls, you're going to need to remember how those forces work um, in order to control them for what you want. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. You guys have any questions? If you do, just jump in and ask, okay? All right, so um, the clay is centered. I did a down and an up. Um, if this was something that I was gonna do for a real, you know, finish keepable piece, I would do another push down from the center, widen it out, and then push out from the edges and bring it back up. That's called wheel wedging, when you kind of go down and then back up. It kind of gets all the clay particles kind of going in the same direction, just like when you wedge on the wedging table, which by the way, wedge your clay very well before you put it on the wheel. Okay, any sort of irregularities in your clay are really going to work against you and make your life kind of difficult. Okay, uh, but for the sake of the demo, I'm going to forge ahead. I've got a nice centered piece. I'm looking at it. I'm not seeing any wobbles. It looks pretty even. There is a little bit of a wobble towards the bottom. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Okay, by the way, my thumb starts twitching. That's normal. Okay. Don't be freaked out by that. Um, when you work on the wheel, your hands use muscles that you might not use on like a regular life basis. So sometimes that just happens for me. Um, okay, so the next part is we're going to open. So right now we have a solid piece of clay. We want that nice opening in the middle. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my two fingers on my right hand. Now I tend to pull and I um, get most of my strength from this hand when I pull. You'll see that. So the wheel is spinning for that direction. If you try it both ways and you feel like you're more comfortable on the other side, go for it. Okay. It's kind of a sense of what you feel more comfortable with. I'm going to use these two fingers. I'm going to go right in the center and I am going to push downward. Okay, so what happened to the ball of clay when I did that? It got wider. wider. Yes, why did it do that? Because you applied downward pressure making it expand. Exactly, I applied downward pressure, I opened and basically kind of carved out and pushed open this um, inner opening and so it got wider, okay? But I want to make a cylinder this time, not a bowl. So what I'm going to have to do then is I'm going to have to equalize that pressure from the outside hand to make it go taller, okay? Before I do that, I'm going to use my needle tool. This is one of the characteristics that you're going to watch for on a cylinder. I am going to clean it off and then I'm going to stab down right in the center, and I know this is hard for you guys to see, but the water line goes right to there. So what does that tell me? That's how thick the bottom is. That's how thick the bottom is of our cylinder right now. It's about a half inch, okay? Now, I happen to get that pretty perfect on the first try. Don't plan on doing that, because it doesn't always happen even for me, okay? Um, if it was thicker than that, then I would know I need to push down a little bit farther. If it was thinner than that, I know I went too far. There's not really a lot you can do to compensate if you go too far. So try to um, measure a couple of times before you get down there, okay? Um, ideal, though, is about a half an inch. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, now that I have that, I'm going to open. I'm going to um, use my two fingers. So I've got one outside and one inside. I'm going to use the inside ones to kind of pull that opening wider at the base but I'm gonna keep pressure on my outside hand so that it doesn't turn into a bowl, okay? But right now, I, most of you probably can't see, right now the inner shape kinda of goes like this, and it kinda of comes down to a point, okay? So right now our clay on the bottom is very, very thick, and our clay on the top is thin, so we wanna equalize that. So I'm gonna moisten this again. Try not to let too much water sit at the bottom. It tends to weaken um, the bottom of your vessel, but then it also, it did, disguises the bottom so you can't really see where it is. I'm going to open this bottom and as I'm doing that I need to make sure that I keep my hands as steady as possible. Okay remember you control the clay don't let it push you around. If we start getting wobbly now and we start moving 
then it's not going to be easy to control and you're not going to get very even results. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. Okay, see stuff starting to get a little bit taller up here because of that pressure change. All right, now before this gets too thick up here, I'm going to start pulling up. Okay, so remember we centered, we opened, we opened the bottom, we widened the bottom, and now we're going to start pulling up. Okay, when we make a cylinder, our goal is half inch bottom, even all the way across, and then we want our walls to be even thickness all the way up and nice and straight vertical. We don't want them to be um, angled in. We don't want them to be angled out. Does that make sense? Okay, so in order to do that, I'm gonna use that kind of pinching technique again. I'm gonna put equal force, although to, uh, to be honest, it kind of feels like it's more force with the outside hand, okay? Because inside force just tends to be easier. Um, so I'm gonna make sure to support with that outside hand. I'm gonna pinch until I get um, a little bit narrower kind of like you're biting into the clay with your fingers a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull slowly up, okay? If you pull too fast, you're gonna start getting like um, swirl marks, okay? Um, too slow really isn't that big of a, an issue. Air on the side of slow, okay? So I'm gonna kind of bite in a little bit. See, there's a little wobble down there. And then I'm going to pull slowly up. If you start to feel a little wobble, did you guys see that wobble kind of towards the top? Um, your instinct is going to be to kind of freak out. Don't. Um, Wobble just means that there's a thicker part of the clay and a thinner part of the clay. So if you kind of hover there and just maintain your ground, um, that will even out. Um, it might take, you know, a couple of rotations of the wheel, you're just kind of staying in the same place. But if you're steady, it will even out. Does that make sense? Questions so far? Okay. Um, looking at this, okay, from about here, my walls are looking pretty good. They're pretty vertical. Looking inside, they look like they're pretty consistent thickness, but I can tell, this is more subtle, you gotta look for, right? At the bottom, it's flaring out a little bit, okay? And if I look inside, it's doing the same thing inside. So it's a little bit thick yet at the bottom. That's where your wooden modeling tool comes in. This is where I am a little bit backwards and I switch directions of the wheel, which a professional potter would probably say you're not supposed to do. Too bad. Purple they got time for <laughs> If I was a production potter and I was, you know, throwing 70 pots an hour or something like that, then I would probably care more about that. Um, what I'm going to use is this side. I'm going to cut down. I'm basically cutting off that excess. Okay, I got all the way down to the wheel head, and then this is one of my favorite parts. I'm gonna make a little cut here, and then I'm gonna pull this excess clay off. Ooh, isn't that fun? Okay, now I cut it in a little bit, which is okay. Um, and then I would use, going back the other way, I'm going to re-wet that so it doesn't get sticky. And I'm going to do another pull oops, from the inside up. Because remember, my inside clay was too thick too, so now if I can push this back out, it should even out. See how as soon as I could, I reached my thumb over to make contact with the other hand. That helps me keep my fingers the same distance apart. Um, that takes some practice. Your fingers will kind of want to wobble and that's just gonna create thick 
and thin spots that are uneven in your clay. Okay? Your cylinder does not have to be this big, but I do want you to at least get like six inches tall. Okay? Now I know on me, from my thumb or from my pinky to my thumb up here is about eight inches. Okay, so that's a little bit, a little bit less than that. Once you get as close as you think you can get to even thickness, straight sides, okay, once you've made that, um, that cut on the bottom, okay, try that off so you can see that. If this were going to be a piece I was going to like finish and keep, I would also make a little undercut. I'm doing this like totally left-handed and backwards, but okay. Undercut's gonna look like that. See how that takes some of that visual weight off the bottom, it makes it look a little lighter. You guys have done elevated feet on your um, slab base and on your coil base. This would be the equivalent of that. It just helps with that shadow line. Um, and it also just makes it a little bit cleaner and nicer. Then what you're gonna do is take your wire cutoff tool, okay, and you're gonna make two cuts. The first cut is going to be under the bottom, so I'm holding it really tight like dental floss. I'm going to cut under the bottom, and then the second cut is going to be down the center. Do a little shimmy there to get it all the way to the wheel head, and then come towards yourself again. Okay, and the whole point of this is I can evaluate my work. Okay, so you want your walls to be a little bit less than your pinky finger thick. Okay, no thinner than about a quarter inch. This is about three eighths of an inch and that's about ideal. Okay, not everything I throw is ideal every time. Don't feel like yours has to be, that's why we practice. Um, see how it gets a little thicker towards the bottom? Okay, that's not so ideal. This isn't the worst case in the world, um, but we really would have wanted to open this bottom probably a little more, kind of like so. Does that make sense? You guys see that okay? Come closer if you can't see. Um, sides are nice and straight, and if I turn this around, this one's flared out a little bit from me um, pulling it off, right? This one, they still look nice and vertical. Um, the rim doesn't look like it's too thick. Um, I know in the past, something I've really had to work on and still do, is sometimes I'll pull my rims too thin, and they'll be weak at the top. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you would look for all of these things, you would check them off on your sheet, okay? Um, some people keep track of like, this one was too thin, this one was too thick, blah, 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 so that as you pull the next one, you know what to, to look for, okay? Once you have this, and you have this, and you can walk across the room and show them to me, and I can say, yay, good job. This can go back in the mixer, okay? Don't even bother putting it in the reclaim, it just needs to be remixed, okay? So that's how to do a cylinder. Any questions on that? Can I have some paper towels, please? Now I'm going to show you guys how to do a bowl. Okay. What I would recommend, though, is that you pull all five of your cylinders first, then switch to bowls. Thank you, ma'am. In between, you just have to have a dry wheel head. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean if you're just going to put more clay on it and throw something else. Does that make sense? Yep. What? You don't have to keep any of them. This is all for practice so you can well, see like, the cross section. You you then you can't count it as one of your five. Oh. But if you haven't cut it, you don't really know how thick it is. And so part of um, doing this repetition and cutting it is so that you can learn, okay, this is what it looks like when it's this thin. This is what it looks like when it's a little bit thicker so that you can try to gauge that. Because um, think back to like coil and slab and how we have to make sure things are hollow and thin enough and stuff like that. If we have stuff that's too thick, it won't dry properly, then it won't fire properly and you risk explosion. Um, so part of doing this is so that you can better kind of gauge how thick and thin things are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Try not to fall in love with anything so that it doesn't make you sad when you have to cut it apart. Fair enough. Okay. Um, when you use paper towel, do not put it anywhere where there's clay, because what's going to happen is this is going to turn clay colored, you're going to get it mixed in with the clay, it's going to make it into the mixer, we're going to have undesired results. Okay, so keep it separate. Okay, 
What is the first thing I need to do? I need to get this on the wheel, and then I need to center it. Yes, very good. Ooh, that was pretty good. My aim is not great. You should watch some of these like professional production potters. They're just like shh, no look, like smack dab in the center while it's moving. It's really impressive. I'm not so impressive. That's some yummy looking water. Right? If your water starts getting too thick, um, dump this in the reclaim, in the wet reclaim bucket. Don't dump this down the sink unless you're sure there's no chunks in it. Um, and then get yourself fresh water. Sometimes that makes a difference. As far as direction? Yeah. Or keep your fingers out of the way. Just be conscious of it. That's all I'm asking. Centering is the only thing that I do that goes against that direction. Okay. So what's wrong with this? What do I need to do next? Put downward. Push it down. Downward. Yep. Now what? Push it back up. Yeah. How do I get it back up? Push in. Push in. Okay, and see this thumb muscle on top? See, I'm compressing this top edge right here with this thumb muscle. And that's why my thumb gets all nice and twitchy. <laughs> that's not a muscle that gets a lot of use on a regular basis. It's like, yeah. it's It's like a really phantom, weird, twitchy, mm -hmm. awkward thing. Compress, compress, compress. Okay, I'm going to go in a little bit more on the bottom. Okay, does that look about centered? Mm -hmm. Okay, see all this excess slip that's coming off on my hand? Um, I'm really conscious to try to sponge it off because if your piece gets too covered in it, sometimes it'll weaken the sides of your piece and it can cause some, again, undesired results. Okay, what do I do next? Uh, take your two fingers and push in with the muscle card. What's that called? No, the Opening. Opening. Yes. So up until this point, everything I do for a cylinder is the same as a bowl. Right? Mm -hmm. You have five minutes. Oh, I do have five minutes. That's fine. I'm going to... Don't lose your needle tools. It will never get your ID back. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> she doesn't take her IDs. Yeah, she does for the needle tools. You have to take Okay. Yeah. This is a little thick for a bowl. For the sake of I have only five minutes left, I'm going to forge ahead. Now, remember I said for a cylinder, you had to keep even pressure between your inside hand and your outside hand. Okay, so for a bowl, what do you think that's going to mean differently? More pressure on the inside. More pressure on the inside so that we get a flare instead of straight up and down. Okay, but I still have to take that like bite of clay at the bottom. You have to open that bottom. And then I'm going to start to pull up and out. And what's happening at the top here? Can you guys see that? It's getting thicker and wider. It's splitting. Yeah, it's splitting. splitting. So what does that mean? It's not enough wedging. Um, could be not enough wedging. It could be some inconsistencies. Um, could be too dry. What also could mean is not enough compression on the clay. Or I'm trying to do too much too fast, which, considering I'm rushing this demo, is very likely. Okay, so right now, 
critique here. Super thin, uneven rim, undesirable. Okay-ish, yet uneven in the middle. Super thick, still at the bottom. So I'm going to put extra pressure down towards the bottom and try to thin this out a little bit. And I'm just gonna focus on pulling up instead of widening it out to thin that and even it out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I don't wanna go all the way up to the rim because that's already too thin. This is why we do practice. Does that make sense? Yes. Once you have um, your bowl shape, then you can kind of refine it. If you want to take it out more, you can. This is a little bit dry and sticky, that's why it's getting wobbly. Okay, that's still pretty angular. I tend to make very angled bowls. Um, so for me, I would probably round that a little bit more yet. But you're going to have to make a judgment call there because you have to figure what that clay can handle at that point because if you take it too far, it's going to slump, right? So let's see what we got here. Burned my finger with a curling iron on Saturday. Oh, no. I just scraped the wire across it. Okay, so critique. What do you notice? Bottom's, thick on the bottom. Bottom's really thick, too thick down here in the shoulder. Um, I also did not use that wooden modeling tool like I should have. So this really all should have gotten cut out, probably down to like there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Questions? This is too thin on top also. Right about between here and here is like the ideal thickness. Okay? When you're cleaning your wheel, just listen for a second, you're gonna take these trays off. Okay, these can go in the sink and get sponged and rinsed out. Sponge and rinse um, your wheel head itself, the entire black part. Keep rinsing your sponge so you're not just smearing the same clay around. Then, after it's clean, green spray the whole thing and paper towel. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you guys.